Well, things certainly escalate quickly, and this ends on an awesome, awesome note. Just <laughs> Tundra Dragon, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> Torica number 70, uh, smorgasbord on board. What the uh, hell? Man, I can see already why this is some people's favorite arc, you know. Whoo, boy. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and inspiring and just oh, jaw-dropping, heartwarming tale of Torico. Our last chapter saw us with uh, really the end of it. it. The chapter was really meant to showcase some of the different abilities of these different gourmet hunters and really to kind of show us a little bit about this Takamaru, I believe. And uh, and then at the end, we kind of got a land hoy, you know, or ice hoy, and we know that they were going to be, you know, that they were coming upon ice hell. So that's where the chapter left off. That's where this one picks up, and it's really neat to see. It's a sight to behold. The art is beautiful in here. I absolutely love it. And as uh, as they as they come into, you know, get as close as they can to it, it's this huge, like, sheer plateau, whatever, wall of ice. And, I mean, the boat is, like, this big, and the wall of ice is, like, it got to be a 1,000 feet tall, if not more, you know. And, uh, and then we go, and everybody's up on deck, and everybody's, oh, wow, you know, and this and that. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, a, a ball of ice breaks free from the side of it and starts coming down at us, you know. And it starts coming down at, right, at, right at the ship. And as big as this ship is, this ball of ice is like half the size of it, you know, would completely sink it. And nobody can do anything about it except for, of course, Toriko. So Toriko's like, yeah, don't worry about it, I got it, you know. So he kind of goes and gears up a little bit, and he's just like, flying knife! you know and goes and goes to slice the thing right in half and it slices but not completely in half you know it gets to get some slice in there and then he's like flying fork you know thinking that maybe he'll be able to nail it maybe stop it drop the momentum change its direction trajectory i don't know and ultimately he's like all right i need one and as the thing's coming upon them, everybody's flipping their shit because this thing's going to just take over them and just completely crush them right and as it's right there and about to crush him man he gears up and he's just like fivefold you know and he does the spiked punch coogie punch whatever you want to call it the fivefold death punch whatever he just you know and just nails this thing and winds up going and it actually cracks and splits and then it goes and they show this great shot of the ship and this thing overhead and it just it, it his as the reverberations from his punch go throughout it, it just shatters it all and it all winds up falling as just basically like ice cubes and the bigger parts falling to the side of the ship you know so it was some wicked cool shit and it was really just to again showcase Toriko and his abilities and then he goes and mentions you know I meant to when I was in gourmet town gourmet city what have you um, you know, upgrade my, uh, you know, my flying fork and flying knife. Apparently, they're not even powerful enough to go in and cut ice, you know, but ice is a nasty customer. So then we go and we find out uh, from McCoy over there, from Colonel McCoy, that, uh, hey, listen, we can take you to the base of the plateau or wherever they wind up, you know, the, basically there's, they got a helicopter, a transport helicopter, uh, but it's not big enough to take, you know, uh, you have to go in two groups, not, not big enough to take everybody. Um, so the the, the big, uh, the, the fat guy, the drunker his name was, he's just like, oh, God, okay, I'll go on the second one. I'm going to go get some food, and he goes below decks. And, uh, and Toriko and Komatsu are going to go and take the first one. Uh, Takamaru, you know, as well gets on there. I think Zongi gets on as well. Zongi's dumbass doesn't even want to go and put on a, a cold suit, even though his guys have him on. And he keeps going and referring to it. It's kind of funny. He keeps referring to, even in RPGs when I play them, I make sure that I go and that I level up first my abilities. You know, I don't rely on gear and stuff like that. And it's funny because when you when you just walk around in an RPG and just fight guys over and over and over again, I've played tons of them throughout my life, uh, you can level up your character where you can just become super strong regardless of what type of equipment he has. But sometimes there's equipment that you can save up and buy, special equipment you can trade for, create, craft, what have you, that can actually go and help you. And, you know, Zongi's kind of trying to say it's the man that makes the man, not the equipment that makes the man. But <laughs> nonetheless, so it's just a funny exchange because he, like, almost freezes his shit off as soon as he goes outside and he winds up putting his suit on anyway. The cool thing was, is while they're on the helicopter on the way up there, uh, Komatsu goes and says, you know, that McCoy must be real brave. And Toriko's like, how so? And he goes, well, you know, he came all the way here with us and everything else. And Toriko goes, no, he didn't. And he goes, well, what do you mean, you know? And then he goes, uh, he goes, uh, Toriko says, you know, not to mention those guys that surround him are these, you know, these those guys in the black suits are these elite ninja, you know, this and that. And, um, you know, basically his bodyguards and blah, blah, blah. And then, and then Komatsu's like, well, yeah, but it was still brave that he came. And he's like, no, I told you, he's not even here. 
So the only thing I can think of is that it's like a doppelganger, it's a projection, it's, um, I don't know, a cyborg copy of him. I don't know, something along those lines, but he's not actually here. And, uh, and then it's cool because we wind up finding out why he's not actually here because then it goes and it takes us back into the ship. And this was completely you know, a surprise to me. Go back in the ship, right? And uh, you go and you see this hallway and there's just fucking just blood and brutality and bodies just like dismembered and just slashed up and just destroyed everywhere, right? And then you go and you see the dude that went below decks to get some food for the second trip, uh, uh, Drunker, I think his name was, and he's slaughtered and everything too. And then you go and you see just like this like sleek ninja looking dude that's got like hair sticking out of the back of his, like he's got a mask that covers over his whole face. Reminds me of somebody out of like, uh, like, like Batman or something like that, you know? Um, really cool looking and I have no idea who the hell it is yet. And he slaughtered, so he slaughtered all the guards and everything like that of, uh, of, of McCoy. And then McCoy goes and appears and he's just like, you know what? He's like, just go find the century soup. You're not going to do any good getting me here, you know? And it kind of leaves it hanging like that. So we know that obviously it, it's not the real deal of him. It's got to be some kind of clone. It's got to be some kind of, uh, you know, hologram, something along those lines. Um, I've seen enough sci-fi and stuff like that, uh, different types of movies and, and read comic books and everything else to know that, that obviously that's what Toriko meant. It's got to be some kind of projection of him, some kind of, you know, however it's done, we'll probably find out in the next chapter. But this is cool because this is the last chapter of the, the volume over here, and it's really kind of, you know, it's making things, you get really excited about it. You're like, oh, man, this is neat. So... Nonetheless, though, it takes, at the end of the chapter, it cuts us back to uh, Toriko and Komatsu, where they're climbing, you know, and they're just about at the top of the plateau, and he's like, hey, and he's talking to Takamaru down there, and he's like, last one up to the top's a rotten egg, you know, and it's like, I'll be right behind you, and everybody's having a good time, right, climbing up this sheer wall of ice, and then they get to the top of it, and this is what they wind up seeing. Boom! This is awesome, man! Look what's up here, and then we wind up finding out it's the Tundra Dragon, the Cerberus of Ice Hell. Its breath will entomb you in ice. And that's how we're left hanging at the end of not only the chapter, but the volume. So I don't care if you're, you know, you're, you're a, a younger kid who's over here in the States and, you know, you got your, you got into this for whatever reason or other, and you got your mom or your dad, they go and they buy these for you at the store, you know, but when volume eight came out and you were waiting at the end of this for volume nine, oh my God, you'd be shitting bricks, I'm sure. And if you were reading Toriko a few years ago online, even when they came out, when the chapter scans or whatever come out every day, man, what a cliffhanger to be left with this freaking tundra dragon. I love dragons too. I love me some dragons. I like wolves for like real, you know, animals and whatnot. That's probably one of my favorite real animals. But dragons, boy, I tell you, I mean, I've uh, I actually got to show some pictures, but I, I've drawn some dragons that love dragons, you know, good, good stuff. And this tundra dragon, and, and, anybody, and I played a lot of RPGs, and in RPGs there's usually a lot of dragons. So very, very cool stuff. My chapter question for you, though, brothers and sisters, is number one, uh, thoughts on the Tundra Dragon and uh, and just what we've seen and heard of Ice Hell over here. But uh, two, I would really like to know what your thoughts are on this new character that we haven't really been introduced to, but we saw just basically slaughtered these elite guards of, uh, of McCoy like they were nothing and, and one of these gourmet hunters. I'm assuming this is somebody from Gourmet Corp. Um, you know, but but I don't know. I mean, obviously, I don't know. So, very, very cool stuff, though. But let me know what your thoughts are on those couple of questions that I asked in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you think that I deserve it. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, Nation. My man Gutch is looking sleek and sexy in his arm over there. Come follow me over my other channel on Facebook and Twitter as well.